Leila and Neil didn't look at each other for the first five minutes. So, Sunil, you have anything to say for yourself? Auntie Vimla asked. Now he had to look at the girl, acknowledge her presence, say something. He took refuge in being American. Hello, he said, as he stood and extended his hand. I'm Neil. How do you do? His words came out with the full roundness of a California accent. Her grasp was surprisingly strong and she looked him straight in the eyes. I'm Layla. She let go of his hand but still felt embraced by his aftershave. Layla wanted to add something, but her mind refused to cooperate. Disconcerted, she looked down and saw the shining curves of his shoes. All she could think of was telling her sister Indy that a man's foot indicated the size of his penis. Sitting on the bed, they had laughed, but now she felt tongue-tied. Everyone was looking at her, and she couldn't even raise her eyes from the spot that had brought on that humiliating thought. Her bent head annoyed Neil. What sort of girl had his grandfather Tatapa suggested he see? He didn't find shyness an endearing quality, and now it only made a strange situation worse. Was this all he was worth? An ageing 30-year-old in an old sari, living in a small house, a father without a job, a mother so eager to please she kept offering him samosa after samosa? Auntie Vimla had gone on and on about how Mrs. Krishnan made the tastiest samosas in town. They smelt delicious, but God knows how many grams of fat were in the deep-fried triangles. Sunil, why do not the two of you go outside? These are modern times. Go, go, walk, talk. Leila preceded him out of the room, determined to make up for her earlier nervousness. She wanted him to think highly of her. She wanted him to like her enough to say yes. On paper, he had all the credentials she aspired to in her husband. A doctor from abroad, and in that swift meeting of faces, handsome.